This is the third in our series of reaction type videos. In the first video, we looked at redox reactions. In the second video, we looked at single replacement, a type of redox reaction. In this video, we're going to look at combustion, our last type of redox reaction that we're going to cover. In combustion reactions, the reactions are going to be between oxygen gas and another compound. We're going to focus on what we call organic combustion, and those reactions produce heat and light. Basically, burning paper, wood, gasoline, those are all organic combustions. The general format for organic combustions is using what we call a hydrocarbon, which would be just a compound that's made of carbon and hydrogen, the subscripts of which can vary, reacting with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. The other type of organic combustion would involve organic compounds that have oxygen in them. So the compound has got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Again, the subscripts can vary. Reacting with oxygen, but they will also only produce carbon dioxide and water. These are probably some of the easiest reactions to recognize and predict. So let's look at a couple of examples. Butane is C4H10. This is the same thing as you have in your butane lighters. If it reacts with oxygen, it's going to produce carbon dioxide and water. Now balancing these reactions is relatively straightforward. You can use what I call the Hollister Company shortcut. In this case, the Hollister Company, HCO, tells you the order for which the elements should be balanced. With a couple of stipulations, all organic combustion reactions can be balanced in this format. The first thing would be to balance your hydrogens. Because we have 10 hydrogens on the reactant side, we need to have a coefficient of 5 on the water on the product side. But the problem with this is that gives us an odd number of oxygens. So if you have a coefficient that's odd numbered for water, you would simply double that value. And that would change to a 10. And you'd put a coefficient of 2 in front of the organic compound that you're reacting because that's where the hydrogens are located. So our hydrogens are balanced on each side now with 20. The next would be to balance your carbon by putting a coefficient 8 in front of the carbon dioxide. And the last is going to be your O. So to finish off our HCO is to balance the oxygens. And on the product side we have a total of 26. So we put a 13 coefficient in front of the O2. Our reaction is now balanced. Let's take another look at a reaction, in this case methanol. Methanol is also called wood alcohol, and if it reacts with oxygen, it's going to also produce carbon dioxide and water. Notice that even though we have an oxygen in an organic compound, it doesn't change what our products are going to be. When we go to balance the equation, we're going to put a coefficient of 4 in front of our H2O. When we go to balance the equation, we're going to end up with two methanols, three oxygens, two carbon dioxides, and four waters. Our last reaction is going to be between sucrose and oxygen. This would be the same reaction as if you took some sugar and threw it on the stove, or if you took a marshmallow and you heat it up in a fire and you got it to burn. <clears throat> this would be your sucrose reacting with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water again. And when this reaction is balanced, you have a coefficient set of 1 sucrose to 12 oxygens, giving us 12 carbon dioxides and 11 waters. So organic combustions are very basic, simple reactions to identify and predict. All of the reactions that we are going to use are either going to use hydrocarbons of just carbon and hydrogen or organic compounds that have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in them. No matter what, all the reactions end by giving us products of CO2 and H2O. And if you balance the reactions in order by hydrogen, then carbon, then oxygen, 
that will make the reaction much easier to balance.